Hey there, my name is Brett. Welcome to On Hand Art. When I was about six or seven, a hot air balloon crash landed on my street. We thought it was the coolest thing ever, even though they wouldn't let us ride in it. Today, I'm going to make a piece that honors that big story in my childhood. My story would not be complete without a book, so let's start by making some of those inside pages. I want them to look aged, so for that I'm using white 80 pound archival paper, and I'll coat them with a thin smear of black tea on both sides. I'll then let those sit and dry for about an hour or so. When they're still pretty damp, I'm gonna stack them up and put them between this paper bag, and then press them under a chair to keep them as flat as possible. And then moving on to the cover, there are plenty of great tutorials out there for book covers, but I'm going to start with cardboard inserts that are the size of the book that I want to end up with. I'm gluing them to a sheet of brown 80 pound archival paper with a healthy dose of Mod Podge. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but I marked off the margins and that will help me make sure that these cardboard pieces are aligned. And then I also have enough overlap to make the cover look nice and neat when I'm done. And then as you can see, there are going to be two cover pieces and a spine. The only real trick here is to make sure that the pieces are straight in relation to each other and that you leave a little gap to allow the cover to bend when you're done. Another heavy dose of Mod Podge will kind of loosen up the paper and allow me to fold it over on starting from the sides. And then before I go to the top and bottom, I'm gonna cut a slight angle and that will keep the corners neat. And then another heavy coat of Mod Podge will help me fold down the top and bottom. Once that's dry, I can move on to the inside cover. Now I'm making that out of a contrasting piece of this 80 pound archival quality paper. And I'll use the outside cover to measure against just to make sure I have enough of a margin so that it sits inside there and it looks nice and neat when I'm done. To make sure that it's straight, I'm gluing one half at a time. Gluing all at once would make it way too easy for it to end up at some funky angle, and the Mod Podge dries really quickly and it holds really well, so I would never be able to get that back off cleanly. But while I let that dry fully, I'm going to move on to the story pages. I'm playing with the chat GPT AI to add a bit of fantasy to the story. For the page layout, I'm using Inkscape. It's free. It might be a little bit basic, but it's everything I need for this. And then I'll remove all but a few of those letters on the balloon side of the page to make it look like they're the last bits left after the balloon has left the page. Once I'm happy with the way that all looks, I'll print it out on one of my aged pages and then trim that and the other aged pages to the right size for the book. To add these pages to the book, I'm first finding the middle and then folding them with a ruler to get a nice crisp edge. And then I'll add some stitching to give it both character, but also further to find that center line. I'm using whatever brown thread I found in my sewing kit, along with a heavy duty sewing needle. At this point, I learned that it goes much faster when I make all the holes at once, which that's what you're seeing here, but it also saves my fingers in time by pushing the paper down over the needle instead of trying to fight the needle through the paper. With them sewn together, I'm using Mod Podge on the spine and the first pages to attach them to the cover. And then I'm going to strategically glue the pages at very specific spots, and that will both hold them together but also preserve some of that wrinkle. For the cover art, I started off with an AI image that I edited later in a photo editor, and then I'm printing it on photo paper and then gluing it in place visually centered. With the book ready, let's make the balloon. So I'm sizing this balloon and then I'll coat it in a couple of thick layers of Mod Podge. And once that's dry and I've actually had some lunch, I'll coat it in a couple of thick layers of blue paint. While the paint is drying, I'm gonna make the word tether. For that, I reformatted the text to be long strings on the page, and then I printed that out and then cut them into long strips. Once I had them all cut out, I had to put them all back into order. That's because I wanted them to read like one long sentence end to end. So I'm gluing them, making sure that the word spacing looks like one continuous sentence. And then once that's done, I'll true up the edges so that they are all mostly the same width. And that will give me a few feet of tape to work with. As far as the basket, I'm making it from blank strips of the same aged paper. In fact, these are offcuts from the word tether I just showed you. And then I just started by gluing the first row to a cross strip. Now, I started under, over, under, over. You kind of get the point. It doesn't matter what order as long as you're alternating them, but make sure also to leave a little bit of a gap between these ribs. And then once that's dry, the rest of the strips can kind of be finagled and slid into place. 
And a thin coat of Mod Podge on the bottom will hold it all in place as I get ready to weave the side on. Getting that side strip on was just a matter of gluing it to a rib to start and then alternating, weaving it like a regular basket, folding it at the right spots to get the corners correct, and then gluing it at the end once I was done. And then to finish the top edge, all I had to do was fold over the little rib tails and then glue those in place as well. With the basket ready, I'm gonna move on to wrapping the balloon in word tape. I want this to look like almost a swirl of words whip themselves into a balloon shape and then it's still in the process of floating away. So I'm starting with a regular pattern, but I'll switch to different angles later on and I'll actually add a second layer in different directions as well. But once those are dry, I'm gonna give them a final coat of Mod Podge and that will just protect the paper. Eventually that balloon is gonna fall apart, so I wanna get it out of this ball. Now, this is the part where I might end up having to start over if this doesn't work out. So I'll give it a couple of quick snips and nothing happens. So I'll pop the balloon and this actually was harder than I thought. It must have been the Mod Podge making that balloon pretty tough, but I'm just kind of sitting here hoping that it peels cleanly off the inside walls, leaving the shape nice and round. Now it took a long time to finally peel off and unfortunately the ball did collapse on me. Now, I think I would have been better off starting with a layer of paper or something just to give it a little bit more structure, but you live and you learn. So instead, I'm stuffing it with plastic bag pieces and that will give it a lot of internal structure and puff it back out. And now I can add the valve or whatever this thing old timey balloons had. It's a scrap of the same long strips of text, just four wide, and then I'm rolling it into a nice tight tube measuring against the balloon itself. And then once that's rolled up nice and tight and I still have a little hole down the center, which I'll use later, I'll add a little glue to hold it all together. And then I'll glue it in place, making sure that it's nice and straight coming off the balloon. Having the bags in there was definitely a happy accident because now I have extra structure and that will hold the valve in place and make sure it actually doesn't fall in. Moving on to adding the basket, I'm keeping it centered with this wire while I glue the word ropes onto the balloon. I actually did add these off camera, mostly because I didn't realize I was not recording, but there's nothing special here, just a strip for each corner of the basket. And then just smoothing them in place, making sure they have tension and look like they're naturally coming off of the balloon. And that's actually why I'm gluing from the basket to the balloon and not the other way around, which I learned doesn't really work very well. With the balloon dry, I can now add the sandbags. Again, I'm using scraps of the aged paper measuring against the basket. And then to make them look like cloth, I'm just crumpling the paper nice and tight and then tightly folding them into a little rectangle. The rope is just some random thread I had laying around and I wrapped that around the top and pulled it nice and tight and then glued it in place with a little dot of Mod Podge. To make them look a little bit more like cloth and less like paper, I'm giving them a dry brush coat of gray, which I tried to get as light as possible. It didn't quite work. And that's why I'm coming back over with another dry brush and this time with a creamy beige color and give it a little bit more of a canvas look. Another drop of glue will hold them in place and it's on to mounting the balloon. I'm using a bamboo skewer as the main support, gluing it between some of the pages. With that dry, I'll add a strip of the words that continues the sentence from the page towards the balloon. I'll give that a little bit of a curve and then glue that to the skewer. And I really don't like when you can see the support structures on a piece of art. So I'll cover the back with a blank strip of the aged paper. The balloon kept wanting to fall over on me, so I ended up adding a wire support to the back of it. That really helped a lot, and I'll show you the finished piece in a minute. Hey, thanks for watching. You know, this project reminded me that oftentimes sculpture requires kind of an intuitive level understanding of physics and mechanics. And that's because I needed to understand how far away from the book I could actually put that hot air balloon, how heavy it could be, what kind of structure I needed to add. And a lot of that's trial and error or just learning over time, things like that. But it started to try and kind of twist on me and rotate in ways I didn't want it to. So I had to go back to the drawing board a couple of times off camera and add some structure to it. But it did come out the way you saw. And so I'm really happy with it. 
And if you did like this video, please consider subscribing, maybe even tell a couple of friends, but also leave a comment, let us all know what you're thinking and just be a part of the community. Anyway, without further ado, here's the finished piece.